2023 brought some incredible night sky events. In April, there was a hybrid solar eclipse, and then in October, there was an annular ring of fire eclipse. And the two best meteor showers of the year, the Perseids and the Geminids, were both free of moonlight, leaving viewing conditions perfect for watching meteors. So what does 2024 have in store for us? Let's find out in today's video, sponsored by Skillshare the online learning community where thousands of members are coming together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. But starting with the news that 2024 is set to be an amazing year for the Aurora and that's due to the sun reaching the peak of its roughly 11 year cycle. During the cycle, there are two periods known as solar minimum and solar maximum and we're nearly at solar maximum. During this time, the sun's surface is more active with an increase in sunspots and volatile regions that have the potential to hurl coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, towards Earth. These ejections of charged particles can cause strong geomagnetic activity here on Earth, resulting in aurora displays that push further equatorward than normal. So this is great news for those at mid-latitudes like North America and mainland Europe in the Northern Hemisphere, and New Zealand and Australia in the Southern Hemisphere. Even during 2023, the Northern Lights were seen as far south as Death Valley and Switzerland, and in the Southern Hemisphere, they were spotted practically overhead in New Zealand. January starts with fireworks, both literally and metaphorically, with a quadranted meteor shower. And if you're lucky to catch the peak, you might see up to 100 meteors per hour. But why do you have to be lucky? First of all, you need to be in the Northern Hemisphere, as the radiant point of the shower is found close to the Big Dipper asterism, which is found in the north of the Northern Hemisphere night sky. Secondly, the peak of this meteor shower only lasts mere hours, so you have to have a bit of luck that the peak occurs when it's night time for your location on Earth. The peak is expected to occur sometime between the night of the 3rd and the 4th, with best guesses around 12.53 Universal Time on January the 4th. During this time, a last quarter moon will rise around midnight, hindering the smaller meteors from shining through. So in summary, head out on the night of the 3rd and pray that the peak falls sometime before midnight for your location, and you might be rewarded with 100 meteors per hour. Also during January, early risers can enjoy a trio of planets in the morning sky. First to rise is Venus, followed by Mercury, and then Mars. On the 27th, there's a conjunction between Mercury and Mars. As we move into February, Mercury sinks back towards the Sun and is no longer visible, but Venus and Mars remain in the morning sky, and they also have a conjunction on the 21st. Moving into March, during the new moon period, we welcome the return of the Milky Way core to the night sky. The centre of our galaxy is the brightest section of the Milky Way band, and by far the most loved and most photographed. During March, we may also see our first naked eye visible comet for the year, Comet 12P Pons Brooks. Many astronomers have already started capturing this periodic visitor, especially during July, where it had an outburst which saw it suddenly brighten by about a hundred times. As it briefly spewed off a bunch of gas and dust, it produced two horns, giving rise to its nickname, the Devil Comet. It continues to approach the Sun and Earth, and astronomers hope it will become naked eye visible during March of 2024, and if it doesn't, there's a higher chance it does during April, when it will reach its closest approach to the Sun on the 21st. Moving on to April, which brings us perhaps the most exciting event of the year in a total solar eclipse. This is where the Moon briefly blocks the Sun entirely from view, leaving the white fiery corona, the Sun's atmosphere, visible around the Moon. In order to experience totality, you need to be somewhere along a thin path that runs through parts of Mexico, across the United States, and into Canada. There's also a chance that you'll be able to see Comet 12P Pons Brooks during totality, so keep that in mind if you're out shooting and experiencing the eclipse. Those in other parts of Mexico, the US and Canada, as well as Greenland and Iceland, will still be able to witness a partial solar eclipse. And I still don't have any plans for this, so if anybody wants to include me in theirs, please feel free to drop me an email via my website. On April the 11th, we have our third planetary conjunction, this time between Saturn and Mars in the east during the morning twilight. 
And if you're interested in trying to photograph the events I talk about in today's video, you should check out Ian Norman's Nightscape class on Skillshare, the sponsors of today's video. It teaches you all the basics and more that you need to know to capture amazing landscape astral photographs. And of course, there's way more than astral photography on Skillshare. There's classes in all things creative from freelancing, web design, graphic design, social media management, and even video production. Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class really helped to structure and improve my YouTube videos and I think I'm going to dive into Asante Bean's notion for YouTube creators next to see if I can add another level of organization because I love using notion to organize my life. So why don't you come and join thousands of others taking the next step in their creative journey. With the new year coming up, I'm sure you all have new goals and new hobbies that you want to learn and Skillshare is the perfect place for it. You can download classes for offline viewing. You're not bombarded by any adverts. You can work at your own pace. And I love the learn by doing approach because each class encourages the members to share a project they've completed after finishing the class. So why not try it out? The first 500 people to follow the link in the video description will get a completely free month trial of Skillshare. You can try as many of the classes as you like and see if you can make 2024 the year your side hustle comes to life. Moving into May, we have the Eta Aquarid Meteor Shower, which peaks just before the new moon, leaving the skies dark and perfect for viewing meteors. The best time to watch will be after midnight and into the mornings of the 5th and the 6th of May. The radiant point of the shower is in Aquarius, so it's a meteor shower that can be enjoyed from both the northern and southern hemispheres. Those in the northern hemisphere should face south for a better chance of seeing meteors, which can reach around 10 to 20 per hour. But those in the southern hemisphere can expect meteors all over the sky at rates of about 40 to 50 per hour during the peak. As we move into June, we have another planetary conjunction on the 4th, this time between Jupiter and Mercury. At the end of the month, on the 29th, Saturn begins its retrograde motion for the year. And during June, those in the Northern Hemisphere will be berating the bright summer nights. But there is a silver lining for those between latitudes 45 and 65 degrees north in the stunning noctilucent clouds. These silver wavy clouds can glow against the dark backdrop of twilight for the next two months. And I won't go into much detail here as I made an entire video about them. So check that out if you haven't already. Moving into July, where on the 2nd and 3rd there is a gathering between the Moon, Jupiter, Mars and the Pleiades star cluster in the eastern morning skies. It's a fantastic photographic opportunity there. Then as we move into August, we have what will probably be the best meteor shower of 2024 in the Perseids. This ever popular display can produce up to 60 meteors per hour from a dark sky location around the peak, which is expected on the night of the 12th into the morning of the 13th. During this time, a first quarter moon will set around midnight, leaving the latter half of the night free of moonlight and perfect for viewing meteors. This is perfect as the rate of Perseids tends to pick up in the pre-dawn hours as the radiant point climbs higher into the sky. September brings us the first of two supermoons this year on the 18th, but that's not all. There will also be a partial supermoon eclipse. A small chunk of the moon will be darkened by Earth's umbral shadow for those in Canada, North America, South America, Europe, Africa and parts of the Middle East. On the 8th, Saturn reaches opposition, meaning it will be its closest to Earth for the year and also shining at its brightest. October brings us our second solar eclipse of the year, and this time it's an annular solar eclipse. This is where the moon is too far away from Earth such that it doesn't cover the sun completely and a ring of fire is left around the moon. Sadly, the path of annularity nearly misses landfall entirely, running mainly through the Pacific Ocean, but it does cross some remote areas in southern Chile and Argentina, and quite fortunately across the tiny island of Rapa Nui, otherwise known as Easter Island. I honestly couldn't think of a more mystical place to experience a solar eclipse. October also brings another chance for a naked eye visible comet as Comet C 2023 A3 Tsuchinshan Atlas is expected to reach its peak brightness around its closest approach to Earth on the 12th. Most predictions have it brightening to a magnitude between 0 and 1, which puts it on par with some of the brightest stars, but others suggest it may even reach minus 4, which is similar to the brightest planet in the sky, Venus. Either way, there's a lot of excitement around the arrival of this comet, so keep an eye on the news around this time of year. 
On the 9th, Jupiter begins its retrograde motion, and it won't return to sidereal motion until 2025. And then on the 17th, we have the second and final supermoon of the year. This is also known as the Hunter's Moon, as the light of the full moon provided some extra visibility for hunters continuing after sundown. During October, those in both hemispheres should start to keep an eye out for some torrid meteors. There are two variants, the southern and northern streams, which both peak during the first half of November, but it's not a sharp peak. There's a steady production of around 5 meteors per hour each towards the latter half of October and the beginning of November, but the best thing about the Taurids is the high percentage rate of fireballs bright, slow-burning meteors. Then, as we move into December, on the 6th, Mars begins its retrograde motion, which occurs once every two years. A day later, on the 7th, Jupiter reaches opposition, meaning it will be at its closest to Earth and also shining its brightest of the year. And I also recently shared a video demonstrating why this is also the perfect time to capture Jupiter and its Galilean moons with a foreground subject. So check that out if you haven't already. On the 25th, Christmas Day, Mercury reaches greatest eastern elongation, climbing high into the eastern skies before the sunrise. So this year's Christmas star is actually Mercury. And that's all I've got for you this year, guys. So if you don't want to miss any of those events, make sure to pick up my 2024 What's in the Night Sky calendar. It has all of these events pre-written into the date boxes and a couple of paragraphs of what to look out for during that month and please help me get rid of the last of the stock because last year I had to throw a lot of them away because they didn't sell out and the planet was not happy with me it cursed me with cloudy skies for six months so follow the link in the video description down below to grab yourself a calendar and then let me know which event you're most looking forward to in 2024 by getting in the comments down below Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my video about photographing Jupiter and its moons. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.